Well, this morning I'm going to carry on on the series that we have been looking at, which is teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. And this is where Jesus, you know, was, um, was introducing a model of prayer to the disciples. The disciples approached him to say, Lord, teach us how to pray. And Jesus um, gave them this model of prayer, which has been such a blessing to us to look at. But before I go into that, I would just love to pray just as we open the scriptures now, as we open the word of God. Let's pray together. Lord, I thank you for your faithfulness. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your word, O oh God, which is life to us, O oh God. Your word comes alive in our hearts today. And I pray that, Lord, your word will grant us understanding, not just to learn, but to obey your word, O oh God. And that, Lord, you will be glorified and lifted up, O oh God. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your goodness. We pray for revelation, O oh God, in your word. And that, Lord, you will be glorified and lifted up, Lord. We give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise, because you are worthy of it, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, we see that prayer, that model of prayer in Matthew chapter 6. And I just want us to read that. Matthew chapter 6 from verse 9 to 13. It says, In this manner, therefore pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors and do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. That was the model that Jesus taught the disciples to pray. And a few weeks ago, Rachel started that series by taking us through those first lines, Our Father in Heaven. I just want to encourage you, if you missed those, that, those um, sermons, I want you to go back and listen to them because it's so important for us to remember that actually God wants us to approach Him from the point of identity, knowing Him as our Father and us as His children. So you can go on our website you can get the sermons there you can get them on spotify you can get them on on itunes as well too and on youtube and let's just connect let's let's listen back to those and let's learn and let's grow together and let's obey the word together and then last week we started looking at just an introduction really to hallowed be your name hallowed be your name you know, we, I said last week that um, hallowed is not a common word. It's, the, the word means to sanctify, to set apart, to praise, to adore. And that phrase could be translated, may your name be sanctified. May your name be sanctified. And this is worshiping the Lord. So Jesus teaches us that right at the start of our prayer, we need to come in worship to Him. We need to come in worship to the Lord Almighty. We are all created to worship the Father. We are all created to worship the Father. And that's why we have been created, you know. And I, and I said last week as well that God's character and will for His children are revealed in His names. God's character and his will and the will for his children are revealed in his name. We see in Psalm 34, Psalm 34 and verse 3, it says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. What does magnify do? Why, do? why do we magnify something? It probably because it appears too small. You know, you get a magnifying glass and you try to see that item, that re thing that is really small in a larger form. And sometimes God might be small in our lives. He might look small in your life. And that's why the psalmist said, Oh, magnify the Lord with me. It's not that God gets any bigger. God can't be any bigger than He is. What the problem is, is our perspective of him sometimes is too small and we need to magnify the Lord we need to look deeper we need to get that those magnifying glasses and look at the Lord and magnify and exalt his name together that's why Jesus teaches us to worship his name because his 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 character is in his name 
and we find that all that character points to Jesus. It's all fulfilled in Jesus. That's why Jesus said in John 17 and verse 6, he said, I have manifested your name to the men who have given, who you have given me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me and they have kept your word. He says that I have mag manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. You know, another version says, I have revealed your name to the men who, have, who you gave me out of the world. Jesus was the re revelation of those names of God. Jesus is God himself. But Jesus was the revelation. And as we go through the names, we'll just like to point it to Jesus at the end of every name, to point it to Jesus so that we can see how those names are revealed in Jesus. And as we get to know the understand the names, we get to understand and learn about Jesus in a better form. The characters of God's names can be found in Jesus. So this morning I want to look at two names. Just simply looking at two names because these names are so rich and I just don't want us to rush through it. You know, <clears throat> if we spent one week on every name, we'll probably be here for the next, you know, number 13, 14 weeks together. But we just want, I just want to pick up two names to look at this morning. And the first one is Jehovah Rohi. Jehovah Rohi, the Lord our shepherd God our shepherd you know the Lord our shepherd is, is, is found in one of the most popular chapters in the Bible and that's in Psalm 23 so many people know this Psalm Psalm 23 the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know, that was a psalm written by David. And David understood what he meant by being a shepherd. You know, shepherding was one of the oldest professions in the Bible. We read there from right from Abel. Abel was a shepherd. And right at the beginning of the Bible, we see that. You know, but we see so many um, characters in the Bible, great men of God. Abraham was a shepherd. Isaac, Jacob, Moses, David. So many um, characters in the Bible were shepherds. And they would all understand what it meant to be a shepherd. You know, it, it, it was the shepherd's responsibility to count each animal in order to make sure that none had gone astray. At night, the sheep were kept in simple enclosures, in caves or within walls made from bushes. And at times, the shepherd would sleep with his body lying across the gate to, enclose, um, to, to, to keep them safe, in order to keep the sheep safe. David understood what it meant to be a shepherd. In fact, in 1 Samuel verse, um, chapter 17 and um, verse 34 and 35, David is speaking to Saul. And David says, But David said to Saul, Your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went after it and struck it and delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when it arose against me, I caught it by its beard and struck and killed it. Wow. 
You know, David wasn't just, this wasn't a figment of his imagination. He wasn't just giving a, a nice story, you know, a story that was exciting or a story that we, you know, you, you, you read and you think, well, this was something that I, I, I would love to do. This actually happened. David is giving an account of when lions and when bears have come to steal the sheep. And when they come to steal the sheep, David says, I go after them and I kill the lion and the bear and I get the, 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 the lamb out of the, out of the lion or, or bear's mouth. He knew what it meant to be a shepherd. And that word shepherd is used in the Bible as well to, uh, as a metaphor for kings. You know, in, in scripture, it's used different, uh, at different times. It's used now in our world today for religious leaders are called shepherds as well. In Hebrew scriptures, you know, they, they speak of God as a shepherd and his people applying the image of religious leaders as well. When you pray to the Lord, your shepherd, you are praying to the one who watches over you day and night. He feeds, is feeding you and leading you safely on the path of righteousness. David could say that the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. He knew God as his own shepherd. You know, so many times, and I just want to encourage you right at the start as we look at the names of God. Don't just learn the name. Let those names be revelation to you. Know him as your shepherd. Do you know God as your shepherd? Do you know him as the one who protects you, who provides for you, who leads you? Or do you try to protect yourself? Do you try to lead yourself? Do you try to guide yourself? Is Google a better shepherd than God is to you? Is Facebook or Instagram a better shepherd than God is to you? This morning I want to encourage you to go back and study that name, Jehovah Roi, the Lord my shepherd. The Lord our shepherd. Is he your shepherd? You know, I said that every name points to Jesus. And that name of Jesus points, that, that name of shepherd points to Jesus as well. The New Testament presents Jesus as the good shepherd. Jesus said it himself. In John 10 and verse 10, he says, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. But I have come that they might have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father, I lay down my life for the sheep. Jesus is our good shepherd. As we understand that name of Jehovah Roi, the Lord my shepherd, it reveals who Jesus is to us. Is there anyone today who feels lost at the moment? You feel lost at the moment. You're, you're trying to make a decision and you are lost. You, don't, you, you feel like you, know, you don't know where to turn. Jesus is the good shepherd. God is our shepherd. Are you in a valley moment today? And you're feeling low and discouraged. God is our shepherd. Do you feel under attack from the enemy? The Lord is your shepherd. I just want to pray right now for anyone. Before we go into the next name, just to pray right now for anyone who needs him to be revealed as shepherd to them. Lord, I pray for your revelation, O oh God, of this name. 
I thank you that you are our shepherd. You are Jehovah Roi, our shepherd. And Lord, I pray if there's anyone right now that needs to know you as their shepherd, I pray that you reveal yourself to them, to guide them, oh God. Lord, if there's anyone trying to make a decision about a job to go into, or a spouse to get married to, someone to get married to, or a house to buy, or what to do in a situation, Lord, I pray that you will reveal yourself as a shepherd to them. Open their eyes, lead them beside quiet waters. Cause them to lie down in green pastures. Help them, O oh God. Let your rod and your staff comfort them and direct them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Jesus is our shepherd. God is our shepherd. Just moving on to the next name. There's another great name, Jehovah Rapha. And I don't know how you pronounce it, whether it's Jehovah Rapha or Jehovah Rofi. But he's the Lord who heals. He's the Lord who heals. I've always known it as, I've always known that name as Jehovah Rapha. And, I, I, you know, I've always thought that name related just to physical healing. Until a while ago, where I realized actually that name is far deeper, is far richer than just physical healing. You know, the Hebrew word Rapha means heal, cure, restore, or make whole. Did you get that? It means to heal, to cure, to restore, or make whole. The verb from which Rapha is derived occurs 67 times in the Old Testament. Though it often refers to physical healing, but it also refers to many other dimensions of healing. It refers to healing of the body, of the soul, of the spirit, but also of water, of land, of nations. God is the healer. God is Jehovah Rapha. I'd like to take us to, just to, let's find where this name was first manifested. You know, I love it because God didn't just reveal himself all at once. He took time to reveal himself. And in here we see that God reveals himself as Rapha the first time in Exodus chapter 15. In Exodus chapter 15, and I want to just give a background to this story. So the Israelites are set free from Egypt. They, they, you know, God takes, takes them through all these 10 plagues that they have gone through. And each plague must have you know, been disappointing. When, they, when the first plague happened and they were expecting to leave, you know, Moses would have come back to say, you know, I'm sure Pharaoh will let you go. And then Pharaoh doesn't let them go. And they're disappointed. They are, they are thrown back into the slavery. And actually the slavery is heightened. All that must have caused some, some disappointment and, and some sense of resentment in their hearts. But then at the 10th time, we see that on the 10th plague, that Pharaoh lets the Israelites go. And they begin to go and, and they're set free from, from Egypt. And they head to the Red Sea and they, they see this massive sea before them. And they're like, what are we going to do here? And suddenly they begin to see that the Egyptians are coming again. Once again, this disappointment. Now we have actually packed and we have moved out of Egypt. And we have we been brought here to die out by the Red Sea. And God manifests himself mightily in such a miraculous way that the Red Sea is parted for the Israelites to walk through. And do you know how deep the Red Sea was? The Red Sea was 2,211 2, meters high, deep. That's the deepest part of the Red Sea. And just to picture that, when you think of the Shard in London, you know, you think of that, the, the Shard is 310 meters high. Imagine the Shard in um, um, eight times. The Israelites were walking through this wall of water 
eight times, seven or eight times the, the, the height of the shard. Imagine, they probably couldn't even see the top of where the water ended. Or the, the size of 18 football pitches. They walked through that. You know, if it was in today's world, there would have been selfies taken. There would have been so much happening in that, <clears throat> in that time of walking through the Red Sea. They come out on the other end. The, the Egyptians try to go through as well. The Egyptians are destroyed <clears throat> because the force of the water coming through kills every Egyptian in the middle of the Red Sea. And then on the other end, they begin to sing songs of praise to God. They begin to sing songs of praise. Miriam writes a song and there's so much happening in there. But then we pick it up from Exodus 15 and verse 22. It says, So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea. Then they went out into the wilderness of Shur. And they, had, they, and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. They had only gone three days from the Red Sea. It's only three days since they had seen the miracle of, of what God had done at the Red Sea. They went three days in the wilderness and found no water. Now when they came to Marah, they could not drink the waters of Marah for they were bitter. The word there, Marah, means bitter. Therefore, the name of it was called Mara. And the people complained against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? So he cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. When he cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made a statute, a statute and an ordinance for them. And there he tested them. And said, if you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases on you, which I have brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. For I am Jehovah Rapha. The Lord who heals them. And he, he, he had healed the bitter water. He had turned that bitter water sweet. And I'm really drawn here to the reason why God reveals himself as Jehovah Rapha. You know, the Israelites had come through those miracles, but it only took three days for them to forget that mighty miracle that God had done. They began to complain. Just three days after walking through that, 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 those walls of water, they began to complain. And the Bible says they turned to Moses to complain. And what did Moses do? Moses turned to the Lord. Moses knew where to turn to. You know, the moment we begin to complain about any circumstance we're going through, we don't see God in it. We don't see God in it. I want to encourage us right now. God revealed himself here as Jehovah Rapha. And the, when the people complained, but he was testing them. That's what the Bible says there. For he tested them. You know, if you're writing an exam, if you're in secondary school or in primary school and, or, or whatever exam you're writing, there's always a test of your knowledge. There's always a test of your knowledge. And the test is to prove whether you have learned what it is that God wants to test you with. Jehovah Rapha. God revealed himself as that when the Israelites complained. You know, bitterness is something that can be rooted in our lives. Sometimes there's a root of bitterness that comes up as complaint. 
And I, I, I looking at the story of the Israelites, you know, I believe that the root of bitterness had, had, been, had been there from probably when Moses um, uh, appeared to them and said, you know, God is going to set you free. And they began, there's an expectation there that God is going to set us free. And then suddenly they begin to have this disappointment after disappointment after disappointment. For nine times they were disappointed. And then eventually they got set free but that root that disappointment had formed the root of bitterness in their hearts because we see constantly through the wilderness the israelites kept on complaining and going back to god and i just want to encourage us you know sometimes the root of sickness is uh, is, is from bitterness the root of sickness sometimes, there's, there's something deeper than just what we see on the surface. And we know that all, not all sickness is caused by, by sin. Because Jesus said that, you know, when, when the, the, the disciples came to him and said, is this man's blindness because of a sin? Jesus said, no, it's to glorify God. We know that not all sickness is rooted in sin, but actually... Um, um, uh, but we can see, but, but God, Jesus always brought wholeness whenever he healed anyone of their sickness. There's more than just the physical outworking of that illness. There's a deep root of something that needs to be healed. Jesus healed them, brought wholeness to them. And when we see God as our Rapha, He's not just wanting to heal our physical body. He wants to heal us, to bring us whole, to make us whole. To get rid of that root of bitterness or that disappointment or that rejection. Whatever it is that has, that has become a, 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 a root for that illness, God wants to re restore and to re redeem it and to change it. It might be that the, the root goes back to a time of crisis in our lives where we had a marriage problem or we had um, um, family upheaval or we had a financial struggle or a tragic illness, you know, slowly draining our lives. And that became a root in our lives, a rather a root of bitterness or disappointment or something that, you know, maybe we, we try to seal it up and try to make it all look as if, you know, everything's fine. And when we came through, when, when we, we got through we saw that we we, we 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 thought that everything was right but then after a week a, a, a while after a time that root begins to spring up and begins to blossom god was revealing his name here as jehovah rapha who heals us from the sickness but not just the symptoms but from the root of it as well the root of it can be unforgiveness. It can be bitterness. God wants to reveal himself as Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals. When we look at that name, you know, in, in what ways does God heal as Jehovah Rapha? There are varying manifestations of, of God's tremendous healing power as Jehovah Rapha. We see that in sickness and, and infirmity in Psalm 41 and verse 3. Or in the healing of mental affliction in Jonah 2 and verse 5 and to 7. Or spiritual fatigue, we see that in Psalm 23 and verse, uh, verse 3. Or emotional suffering in Psalm Psalm 147 and verse 3 in anxiety or worry in John 14 and verse 27. But there are so many references in the Old Testament to God, our healer, to Jehovah Rapha. One of them is found in Psalm 103 and verse 3. It says there, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities? 
Not just your physical healing, but he forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things. Jehovah Rapha forgives our sins. He heals our disease. He redeems our life from destruction. He crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies. Jehovah Rapha is so much more than just our physical healing. He wants us to be whole, to be complete. In Psalm 147, Psalm 147 and verse 3, He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He heals the brokenhearted. Are you brokenhearted today? Jehovah Rapha wants to reveal himself to you as our healer. In Jeremiah 30 and verse 17, But I will restore to you to health and heal your wounds, declares the Lord, because you have called, you are called an outcast, Zion to whom no one cares. God, Jehovah, God is our healer. When we pray, hallowed be thy name, God wants us to, to, to recognize that he's our healer. Let's worship him before we go to ask him to heal us. Let's worship him as our healer. Let's worship him for who he is. He is Jehovah Rapha, our healer. Lord, I thank you that you are Jehovah Rapha, my healer. You heal me. You forgive me. You deliver me. You redeem me. Lord, I thank you and I worship you because you are Jehovah Rapha. Before we move into asking, let us recognize that he is our healer. And we see that in Jesus. Jesus is our healer. You know, in Exodus, when God speaks to Moses, he tells Moses to get a stick and to put the stick into the water. And that, that stick turned the water from bitter to sweet. You know, that wasn't any, there, there's no explanation today. It's only a miracle that could have done that. The Sky News of those days, the BBC of that, would have been trying to crack their heads to wonder what made that water change from bitter to sweet. It was a miracle. It was the power of God that changed that water from bitter to, to sweet. And it took a stick. It took a tree. And when we look in the New Testament, there's a tree that is represented there. Jesus was hung on a tree. And on that tree, he got our... He, he got our our healing completed. Our healing was completed on Calvary. On that tree Jesus hung on. And today we can walk in freedom in our healing because of what Jesus did. And when we look at that name Jehovah Rapha, it is manifested in Jesus himself as our healer. Because the Bible says by his stripes we are healed. We are healed and we are made whole. Jesus did not just care for the physical illness. He cared for the wholeness of the body. When the woman with the issue of blood came and touched his garment, she was healed physically. But Jesus wanted to do something more. He wanted to make her whole whole he said go and you have been made whole God wants to make you whole today he wants to make you whole this morning and as we come to the end of this meeting I just really want to 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 to, to minister into that if there's anyone here that needs to be made whole God wants you to be made whole completely not just healed in your body but then you carry on complaining you carry on moaning you carry on with the bitterness with the unforgiveness no he wants a full package you to be whole completely in him and as we come to the end of this message i just want to i just want to sing this song it's an old song but it's so true he says, you are the Lord that healed me. You are the Lord that healed me. 
And if you're here today and you need healing from God, you need the healing from God, I just want to encourage you right now to just reach out to Him. Reach out to Him. Let's just reach out to Him. Because He's the Lord that heals us. He's the Lord that heals our disease. I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am the Lord your healer. I sent my word and I heal your disease. I am the Lord, your healer. Let's sing that together. I am the Lord. I am the Lord that healed me thee. personalize it you are you are the Lord that he let me you are the Lord my healer you sent your word and you heal my disease you are the Lord more time you are the Lord you are the Lord that he let me you are the Lord my healer you sent your word and you heal my disease you are the Lord my healer are you out there and you need a healing are you there you need healing from the Lord just reach out to Him right now physical healing emotional healing spiritual healing He wants to heal you He wants to heal you He wants to deliver you He wants to make you whole Jesus, Jesus, just come right now, Lord, in our living rooms. Come right now in our living rooms, Holy Spirit. Let your, the revelation of that word of you as healer come into our homes right now, Lord, that you will reveal yourself as our healer, Lord. We give you praise. We worship you and glorify your name and magnify you, O oh God. You are the Lord, our healer. We exalt you and magnify you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. I just sense the Lord healing someone right now of arthritis in the leg. Arthritis in your leg. The Lord is healing you right now of your, of your right leg. Your right leg. The Lord is healing your right leg of arthritis right now. That right knee is getting healed right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There's a lower back pain. A lower back pain. The Lord is healing you right now in that lower back pain. The Lord is healing you and is bringing you that healing right now where you are in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus there's someone struggling with skin disease you know you're struggling with dry skin whatever skin disease it is God is bringing healing to you right now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus there's wholeness coming to you right now if you need a touch from God just reach out to him right now just stretch out your hand and receive your healing before him. Lord, we declare the healing of the Lord upon us 
the healing of the Lord upon us in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We declare the healing of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because you heal us, O God. You heal us and you deliver us, O God. Oh, thank you because you forgive us, Lord Jesus. Wholeness. Wholeness, Lord. Someone is struggling with rejection. God is healing you of that rejection right now. He's healing you of rejection. You have felt rejected by your father. There's a rejection that has, the root of rejection that has been there from your childhood. God is healing you right now of that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, thank you, Lord. So many words are coming. I just sense God um, saying that there's someone losing their hair, and, and it's not because you're going bald. It's for a different reason. You're losing your hair. God is healing you right now of that disease. In the name of Jesus, God is healing you of that. In the name of Jesus, someone with an ear infection, God is healing you right now of that ear infection. In the name of Jesus, Lord, you are Jehovah Rapha. You are the one who heals us. You are the one who delivers us, oh God. You are the one mighty God, the one who is able to heal us, oh God, Jesus. I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am the Lord, your healer. I sent my word and I heal your disease. I am the Lord, your healer. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you, O oh God. Thank you for your healing power that is manifested in our lives. Thank you for your healing power that is at work within us. Thank you, Father, because you are the Lord who heals us. You are the Lord, our shepherd. You are Jehovah Roi, Jehovah Rapha. Thank you. Hallowed be your name. Let your name be magnified in our lives in the name of Jesus. Oh, we give you praise. We worship you. We bless your name because you are worthy, worthy of all glory, all honor, all praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, if you don't know Jesus, we would love to, 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 to introduce him to you. And I just love you, you know, if you are here and you don't know Jesus, if you would just want to click on the link that will be in the chat right now and just put your name down, I would love to get in touch with you. But I'd love to lead you in this simple prayer, this simple prayer of salvation. And that is all it takes to know him as your healer, as your deliverer. Just say this simple prayer, Lord Jesus. I invite you into my heart. I ask you to forgive me all my sin and to deliver me from all unrighteousness. I repent of my sin and I invite you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit, be glorified in me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, I would love to get in touch with you. You can just put your name down in that link and would love to reach out to you and to, to, to send you some more info. But it's been great um, being with you today, for you joining us today on, on, on Church Online. Just want to thank you for that and thank you for just being part of, of all God is doing. We're looking forward to a time where we can meet together as a fellowship, as we mentioned to the family um, 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 last week weekend we're aiming for July the 11th as our first Sunday back in the building we're aiming for July the 11th we will next Sunday I'm going to give you a bit more information about that but I'd love you to put that date let's look forward to it the renovation is going well and it's going to target so we're aiming for July the 11th to be back in the building but we'll give you more information next week it's been great bringing the word today with you and I hope that you have been blessed Let's go home, let's study those words, and let's grow in Him. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you.